What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to export videos from Premiere Pro with a transparency layer, alpha layer, or essentially the PNG equivalent of a video. When you export a video, it's gonna have your image. Of course, if you have something smaller on the screen, it'll have black bars around it. This is cool and all, except for when you don't want to have these black bars. For example, if I add my intro here, you'll see that I have my little video, followed by a few things in the bottom left that show over the video. These are, of course, PNG. PNGs in my case and take up just this portion over here. But if we were to export this and pre-render it for me to just drop in here, you'll see my title and then it'll go to a black screen with just the things in the bottom left as it doesn't have a transparency layer. If you want to export this video here with a transparent background so we can just drop it on top of a video and we can see straight through it except for what we want to keep, this video will show you exactly how to do it. I'll be using my intro here. It's just a bunch of PNGs that click through and if I were to export this, as I do practically anything. You'll see that if we drop it onto a video, for example, just like that, it goes through the intro and then the screen is just black. It only has the text in the bottom right over here. In order to export this video without a black background and instead have a transparent background, we'll simply hit Control M or head across to the Export tab and here, Preset dropdown, choose More Presets, and you'll be searching for alpha. Most of the time you'll find ProRes with alpha. These are all good options. Apple ProRes is of course better for Apple devices. Choosing any one of these, for example, ProRes with alpha, QuickTime, as I have a Windows PC with Intel, I'll choose this, OK. And on the video section, we'll simply expand more and make sure that depth is set to 8 BPC plus alpha. In most cases, you usually don't need more color depth unless you know what you're doing. Just make sure it has plus alpha, otherwise the background will be rendered as black and we'll see it in the final product. That's it, that's how simple it is. If we were to export it now, it may take a little bit longer and dropping it back into our sample video. This time, you'll see that we have the intro and shortly after, it's just this text left in the bottom right. Perfect, it worked exactly as we hoped. That's it, that's how simple it is. Now, the thing that you would have noticed is that the output file from rendering with an alpha mat, even though the video is around 40 seconds long, the file size is absolutely massive. Instead of dropping our quality and rendering out to a smaller file, we can actually render to two separate video files using a different encoding format, such as H.264, and composite them later on. This is super easy to do. First of all, we'll need to render our video once more, and this time, we'll be choosing our usual rendering format. For me, I'll use just 1080p as an example, which matches this output video file here. Then we'll give it a name such as foreground and send it off to render where we land up with a nice small three megabyte file instead of 300. But of course, this video doesn't have a transparent background. It's just got this black background. In order to change that, we'll be exporting the same video once more. This time, we'll keep everything the same and on the video section, we'll expand more and make sure that we have a render alpha channel only ticked. Now we can choose export, although we should have named it something like alpha channel or intro alpha, whatever, something alpha or A, just to tell us what it is. So I'll just name it alpha. And you can see now, instead of 300 megs, we're only using five. This is a huge amount of savings. And the foreground video, which contains most of our video data, is just the video as it is usually. However, the alpha channel video is similar, but it's completely white for whatever sections are actually visible. And you can see the text in the bottom right. In order to actually use these in your project, simply add both of them to a timeline where you'd like to use them. So first we'll add our foreground, which contains all of the normal video data. On the layer above this, we'll be adding the alpha. Just like that, you should now see white wherever there's data that should be shown. And the foreground layer, for example, shows my intro and the overlay. What we need to do now is fix any duplicate audio. If there is, I'll unlink and delete the audio here. So we're not playing the audio twice and we'll select the foreground video, the one with all the video information, this one here. From the effects panel, we'll search for matte and we'll add track matte key to our foreground video, which contains all of the normal video data. From the matte option here, we'll simply choose the video layer that corresponds with our alpha channel. In my case, video three. 
Then we'll change it from composite using alpha to composite using Matt Luma. And now when we scroll through our video, you'll see that we have the intro, it fades out. And now we simply have the text in the bottom right, which is the same as what I had in my intro template file here. We've now successfully done the same thing. This time, instead of using 300 megs, we're only using six. That's a huge amount of file space saved, but of course it may not be as cheap technically as we are doing a bit of work on our graphics card, but to be honest, it's probably mostly the same on modern hardware. And the place you'll really get your speed up is by saving a ton of drive space, especially if you're using slower hard drives instead of SSDs. But anyways, that's really it for this quick video. So hopefully you found it useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.